Today, we're going to be talking about the VersaGrip Pro. Right out of the gate, the VersaGrips, they're great. The question is not, are the VersaGrips good? The question is, are they good enough to warrant the premium price tag? In this video, we're going to talk about anything you could ever want to know about the VersaGrips Pro. We're going to talk about when to use them, how to use them, how they compare to normal lifting straps, materials and build quality, sizing, durability, price, and at the end, we'll talk about my opinions on them and whether or not I think they are worth the price tag. What's up guys, Ryan here at TradeawayTraining.com where we help busy professionals get more results in less time through online training. Now, before we begin, if you want more information on body transforming training and nutrition topics, consider subscribing. First, let's talk about why you would want to use straps. Now, quite simply, you would use straps to help you lift heavier weight if your grip strength is a limiting factor by removing grip strength as a factor. If your grip strength isn't a factor, you don't need lifting straps. As a side note to the review, if you do purchase these lifting straps or any other lifting straps, I would recommend you only use them when you need them so that you're not weakening your grip strength over time. Versa grips work great for any heavy pulling exercise, deadlifts, any kind of row, and any kind of pull down. They also work great for any exercise where you're performing a lengthy static hold like dumbbell lunges, dumbbell step ups, or hanging ab work. You can technically also use them in place of wrist wraps for pushing exercises, but I don't. Quick update, since I had never used Versa Grips for pushing exercises before, I wanted to use them for bench today just so that I could try it out and see how I felt about it, and I was not a fan. I didn't like having the rubber in between my hand and the bar. I like having my hand directly in contact with the bar. It made it really hard for me to find the correct spacing. I was having to slide my pinky out from under the rubber flap to find the ring and then slide my hand back under the, the rubber flap. And it just was not something that I was a fan of. I was thinking about the, the wrist wrap itself, the strap itself, rather than actually focusing on the set that I was doing. So personally, I would not recommend using the Versa Grips for pressing exercises. Personally, I use them mostly for heavy rows and sometimes for lunges and step ups, depending on how heavy I'm going. Now, actually using these couldn't be more simple. Inside of the right wrist strap, there is a tag inside of the right one that will say, right. Well, but really in reality, you don't even need the tag because if you look at the shape of the rubber flap, there's a thumb cutout. So whichever side the thumb cutout is on, you'll already know which hand to put it on based on that. So when you pull these out of the gym bag, you already know that's the left wrist strap because of the thumb cutout. And then you already know this is the right wrist strap because of the thumb cutout. So all you have to do, slide your wrist inside and then strap them down tight. And once they're on, that's it. Simply wrap the strap around the opposite side of the weight and into your palm, close your hand over the strap, and you're ready to go. Versa grips are way quicker and easier to use than typical wrist straps. With regular straps, you have to wrap the straps around the bar tight, then attempt to keep the straps tight while wrapping your fingers around the straps. Using the Versa grips, it's easy to get both straps the same level of tightness and it saves time. In my opinion, the real place where these shine through is when you're using dumbbells. Now, if you've ever used regular straps with dumbbells, you understand the frustration of trying to finagle your fingers around the straps while inside of the confined space of a dumbbell and having a dumbbell head on each side of your hand. Versa grips are superior to standard lifting straps in pretty much every way. Now, that said, I do still lift with traditional style lifting straps that are padded when I do deadlifts. Now, the main reason why I still use this type of lifting strap when it comes to deadlift is because I don't mind the way these feel. They don't bother me. And the time savings isn't really a factor for me either because when I'm about to do a heavy set of deadlift, I like to take a second to kind of get my head focused on the set. And so I'm gonna be waiting for a moment before I actually pull the weight off the ground anyway. So the extra 10 seconds or so 
that it saves by using these, it's not really gonna benefit me there either. And also, since these are a grippy rubber, I don't want them to wear out. I would rather just go ahead and use these cheap straps and wear them down, which these will last a long time anyway, than wear these expensive straps down. I have used these before for deadlifts, and then one thing that I have noticed that I don't like is there's a thick rubber piece in the end right there to kind of help you give something to grab onto when you wrap your hands around and that thick rubber piece is just kind of free inside of there it will twist around and if i'm doing a heavy set on the deadlifts it can kind of get turned completely sideways uh, if you can see it like that right there how it's sideways i don't really know the quality of the rubber piece that's inside of here so i don't know how long it would last or how much life it would take out of the strap itself if I were to continually do that over and over and over and over again. Now that brings us to build quality and materials used. Now if you look at the actual strap part of the Versa Grip, it's gonna be pretty much the same as your typical lifting strap. It's gonna be the same width, it's gonna be the same thickness, so nothing really fancy there. But if we look at the padding, that is one of the places where the Versa Grip Pro shines through. Now, if you look at the neoprene padding here and then the padding here, the thickness is almost exactly twice as thick here as it is with the standard lifting strap. And in addition to it being thicker, it is also wider than the strap part. And so the strap won't be digging into your skin when you're wearing it and using it. So you have a little bit of extra cushion on the sides there to keep it from pinching. You also have the metal ring Nothing much to say about that. It's made out of stainless steel. It's not gonna rust or anything like that. Now, as far as the rubber flap itself, so the main part of the Versa Grip, we have a sticky rubber material. It has a really good grip to it. It's double layered, and then it's also double stitched all the way around. And then there's also the thick rubber piece that helps you to grip onto it inside of the rubber strap, which I mentioned earlier. Now, as far as the exact rubber material that is used. I'm not sure it's not listed on the website. What is listed on the website, segue, is the sizing chart, which you're gonna wanna pay close attention to because there are three different types of VersaGrips and they all have a different sizing chart. Measure the bony part of your wrist and reference the chart that is on screen. Now, one note that I do wanna make real quick is that my wrist is seven and a half inches, which should put me right smack dab in the middle for the regular slash large size, which is what I did get. That's what I own. And they are a tiny bit on the large size. Now I can strap them down all the way and it's not really an issue, but if I had to do it over again, I would probably size down just so that I could get them a tiny bit tighter than I'm able to with these. So if you'll notice when I put these on, I have these strapped down as tight as they'll go. The padding is touching on both sides and then I have a lot of extra hanging off at the end. If I had it all over to do again, I probably would size down and that is something that I've seen several people say both in reviews as well as people that I know in person that own these. So all that to say, if you're on the lower end of the size range, you might want to consider sizing down. In my opinion, there's no reason to get the Classic over the Pro. If you're already gonna be spending that much money on a strap, you might as well go ahead and get the Pro Series because it has a longer, grippier piece of rubber for the flap and it has extra reinforcement so it's gonna last you longer anyway. So in reality, you might end up spending less money on this in the long term than if you were to save money by buying the Classic. There's also the Fit series, which is basically a smaller version of the Pro series. Uh, it's made specifically for people with small hands and small wrists. So if your wrists are smaller than five inches in circumference, then you'll go with the Fit series, otherwise, go with the Pro Series. So we've talked about the materials used, we've talked about the quality of these. So how well does that translate into longevity? How durable are these? Now I went back and I had to look in my email because I actually couldn't remember when I purchased these, I've had them for so long. And it turns out that I purchased these in 
February of 2015. In other words, at the time of recording, I've had these for almost, not quite, but almost five years. And in that almost five years that I've owned these, I would say roughly I average wearing these in maybe two of my workouts per week for the past almost five years. And they're still in really great shape. Now, the only noticeable wear that I will say is if you look right here, and if you can't see that, I'll throw a picture up on the screen. There's a little bit of wear across this part right here. It is the same way on both of the straps which that makes perfect sense because that is where the actual bar sits. So the knurling of the bar is digging into the straps at that point. So it makes sense that you would see a little bit of wear there. Now that said, I have used these for deadlifts in the past. I've used these for several heavy exercises and there's not that much wear on these. So it's a surprisingly small amount of wear on the rubber for as much as I've used these and how heavy I've went on exercises while using these. Other than that, the only other wear that I have noticed on these is there's been a little bit of unraveling of thread around the edges, but it's all been on the outside of the stitching, so it's not something that is gonna affect them structurally. It's just something that if you look really closely, you might see that it's not as crisp around the edge as it used to be. But again, that's not something structurally that's an issue. That's just something that you would notice as far as if you're paying a close attention to how well they look. But other than that, that's pretty much all the wear that's on these after me using them, like I said, for almost five years. I could easily see these lasting at least another five years, maybe 10 years since I'm not deadlifting in these. If I were to use these for heavy deadlifts, I would say the total lifespan of these might be maybe five years total, five to seven years total. So you'd have to replace them a little bit more often, obviously, if you're using them for heavier exercises where the knurling is digging into the bar that much harder. That's something to keep in mind, but really, five to seven years is a really long lifetime. I think you're more likely to lose them and have to replace them versus actually wearing them out and having to replace them. The VersaGrip Pro is a premium product. Now with a premium product, you get a premium price tag. So how much are these? At the time of recording in 2019, these cost $64 on Amazon. Like I said, that is a pretty premium price tag when you consider a pair like this cost $9 on Amazon. So the question is, is it worth it to purchase the VersaGrip Pro? Yes. The VersaGrip Pros are great. If something were to happen to these, I would buy a new pair in a heartbeat. Now, that said, I do still use these for deadlifting, and if something were to happen to these, I would buy a new pair in a heartbeat. To me, these aren't taking the place of each other. Even though they are the same type of product, both of these stay in my gym bag 100% of the time. I never remove either of these from my gym bag except for to use them. So to me, it's both and not either or when it comes to lifting straps. Now, if you only want to buy one pair, then definitely go with these. Now before you go, I do want to make one quick note. The VersaGrip bag that I showed at the beginning of the video does come separately. So you will need to purchase the bag if you want it. It is $10 on Amazon at the time of recording. And in my humble opinion, it is completely and totally worth it. If you're gonna be keeping these in your gym bag, there's gonna be you know, possibly chalk in your gym bag. There's definitely chalk in my gym bag. There's dirt, you know, whatever. Gym bags are dirty. Gym bags aren't clean. So you wanna keep these in the clean bag to protect the investment that you're making. And I do view these as an investment towards your workout. So if, like I said, if you're gonna buy these type of straps, I would recommend you go ahead and purchase the bag as well. I will include links for the VersaGrip Pro as well as the other two series of VersaGrip products in the description below. I will include a link to the bag and I will also include a link to not this exact pair since this is the bodybuilding.com pair, but the same style of lifting straps 
in the description below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate it, give it a thumbs down. If you want more content just like this, consider subscribing, or you can check out my product review playlist, which will be up on the screen right now. You can also join us on the Treadway Training Blogcast. We're there every Sunday at 3 p.m. That's treadwaytraining.com slash blog. As always, God bless you and your family, and we'll see you tomorrow.